everyone, this is Vlad from Modulus Render, and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about layered materials in Thea Render. I recently had a project where the client wanted me to make uh, this type of custom tiles, and I want to create a single material organized on layers that would have a different layer for each type of tile because I want to put this texture on all kinds of shapes, uh, cubes, spheres, curved walls and I don't want to model each individual tile in 3D. So what I first did is I used this reference image and I basically traced over it, right? I have made my horizontal lines and my ver vertical lines and I started to trace manually uh, each of these tiles. Now I know what you're gonna say that seems pretty boring so I'm not gonna do that right now but it took me like 20 minutes or half an hour and then I had this. I wanted to uh, color code it because I'm gonna use this uh, trace as a material. So I just modify the colors. So I want one texture to be all white like this and another one I'm going to use as a mask for the for the metal tiles like that and then I'm just going to invert the the texture and of course I used Photoshop to generate all these textures or basically to crop them because um, I already had everything I needed from within SketchUp and of course for the masks that look like this I don't need the lines so that's pretty easy I just go to edge style and disable the lines and like this I exported each texture or each mask into Photoshop and here I just cropped them all together and then I had these three uh, layers right one for the metal tiles uh, one for the white tiles and one for the bump map so let's see how to use these three maps and create that type of material. Now this is the scene I usually use for uh, material creation. It's a simple scene that looks like this. Some basic shapes and it's lit by a studio HDR image and I've activated the ground plane. Let's see how it looks. This is how the scene looks so far and I'm gonna use this back wall to make my tiles material. The first thing I'm gonna do is select the color and then add a texture to that color. I'm gonna use the tiles bump map So let's start making our tiles. First of all, I'm going to switch from preset to editor and copy and paste the diffuse uh, added to the bump map so we have some details on the texture. Now, the first layer I want to add is for the metal tiles. So I'm going to right click and duplicate layer. Now I know it's uh, metal so I'm, I can switch the basic to uh, metal material. You'll see everything is metallic and here's where I'm gonna add my layer mask just as I would in uh, Photoshop. So this layer mask means that uh, the white parts will show through it and the black ones will not. So let's open that up and you can already see, let me just change the color. I'm 
something like this and add some roughness to it. Hmm, too much. Let's go to wall so we can see it better. Okay. I'll have to move this a little bit because I can't see because of my camera. But now we can change only that layer or only that texture, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now let's add another layer. Just duplicate this one and I'll move it up up here and we're gonna have a color for that one and I'm just gonna copy and paste the same mask and I will invert it so you see now I have a layer for all the tiles that were white and I have another layer which is this one for all the tiles that are metallic and now I can just uh, change them, play with the colors and the reflections uh, until I have what I'm looking for. So in this case, I didn't want the tiles to be completely white. So maybe like a light gray or, or a beige color, something like that. And of course, with some reflection okay let's see how this texture looks in our scene It looks pretty cool, but I want some more color in the tiles, in the metallic tiles. I'm going to go here and increase the roughness a little bit. So it's not like a mirror. Okay. Now I think this layer is blending with the bottom layer. So let me see if I decrease the brightness of this one. Yep. So because the, the bottom layer is uh, a white diffuse map, it's blending with it and the colors are pale. So by controlling the brightness, you control the, um, the blending effect of the two layers. Oh yeah, so this is pretty cool. And now just right click and save material. Now, another instance where I like to use uh, layers is adding imperfections to a material. So 
let me just make a new material instead of this wood floor and I'll add a texture to it right so we have this texture with this material switch to editor and let's just start the render and add the layers okay so first of all I'm gonna add some reflectance and roughness and uh, normal maps so reflectance Sorry, bitmap. Choose the reflectance map. It's very reflective. And then the roughness map. Or gloss map and push it to 100%. And now we need some detail uh, in the wooden tiles, and we're gonna use a normal map. Add the normal map, switch to normal, and then, I don't really know why, but I have to increase the normal a lot so it shows now with 100 percent you'll notice or you won't notice the the normal map effect so i have to put it like a thousand percent so it shows yeah now you see it it's more visible. Now what I like to do when adding imperfections is have two layers. One of the layers will be the clean material and then the top layer will be the dirty uh, scuffed um, material. So the way I usually do it is I have my clean wooden floor in this case and then right click duplicate layer and add uh, imperfection maps. It's good to have uh, a lot of imperfection maps so you can play around with scratches and scuffs and stains and fingerprints and smudges and all of that which is really fun. So let me just go to the top layer here and I'm gonna mix the diffuse map with a bitmap I'm going to choose these smudges over here like that and instead of multiplying the maps I'm going to add them like that so I can see the those smudges. Now don't worry if it's too much dirt or too many imperfections because uh, we're going to reduce the the blending between the two layers. So I'm just going to copy this one and paste it in the reflectance map so it affects the reflection. And then instead of the normal map, I'm going to add some scratches. Let's see. What do we have here? Scratches light. Whoa. Maybe this one. I'm going to use a bump map. Now we can start to see the 
the spills, the smudges, and those uh, scratches. We can reduce them. You know what? Let me just leave them at 1000% which is a lot, I know. But as I said, even if we go overboard with the fingerprints and the damage that we create in the texture, um, we can always adjust the blending. So if I leave it at 20% or even less, it doesn't matter, but the, the subtle effect that this has is has a great impact of the on the final image so let's just leave it at around 50 so it's more visible and now this is how I usually prepare all my materials um, I have two layers one is the clean look and then the other one has all kinds of imperfections on it and I just adjust it so I get the look I want. Now all we have to do is save our material and add it to the final scene. Now this is the interior scene where I wanted to use the, the custom tiles and the, uh, the wooden floor that we just prepared. So I added these to the walls and to the floor and I'm ready to set up the final render. This is a simple interior with my trusty light panels in the windows. I added uh, another light panel here, just a simple rectangle with an orange tint because I wanted some uh, warmth in the final image. So I want some orange light or uh, warm light coming in. And set up my camera and let's see how it looks and this is how the render looks we have our tiles material we have our floor we have the lighting set up now we can just set the camera and render our final image now this is the final render that I did using this technique. If you found this information useful, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and I'll see you in the next tutorial.